We begin today with the iconic All in the Family theme song. If you're not familiar with All in the Family, I think that I can pretty much sum it and the theme song up pretty dang quick. The theme song is terrible actually. The two main characters, Archie and Edith Bunker, sing it off key, but the lyrics are very interesting. He speaks about missing Herbert Hoover. Hoover had a very complicated legacy, and I'm no poli sci channel, so I'll sum it up briefly. Hoover was the president during the onset of the Great Depression. A lot of people blamed him for it, but really it was a lot of different factors that caused it, but a lot of people were upset with the fact that he refused to send any relief to Americans who were starving and whatnot. He became synonymous with the homeless encampments that would be nicknamed Hoovervilles. This all occurred during election time, so a lot of the reason he didn't want to do any of this stuff was he didn't want to lose the re-election. He would, though, go on to lose the re-election to FDR. Hoover messed up so bad, it wouldn't be another Republican president for 20 years. In the 70s, Herbert Hoover became a sympathetic figure to many for his toughness. Archie Bunker sings about how back then there was no welfare state, and that's what many missed. How girls were girls and men were men, how his old car ran great. Those were the days. He also talks about how $50 could pay the rent and all the freaks were in a circus tent. Those were the days when guys like him, they had it made. I don't know what just went wrong, but those were the days. The song is sung over an old timey type piano and it's made to sound old to make the song feel like a classic, even in 1971. 1971 was also a crazy time because the Civil Rights Act of 1964 changed the world. All those damn hippies were hopped up on something Women having jobs was more of the norm, fuel shortages, Vietnam War was popping, disco was coming. To me, the inherent nostalgia that's woven into the keys represents how Archie Bunker is an artifact in his own world. His era encapsulated in amber. It's even in his last name. He's named after his bunker mentality. Now to be fair, most of the stuff Archie remembers of America being great was actually from when he was a child, or even before his time. This was 1971. Ask yourself if you sound the exact same over 50 years later. The older generation has complained about how weak the next generation was forever. TV has also been inherently political since the beginning. This was a family sitcom. As I will always say on this channel, if you think TV is woke now, I really implore you to actually do your research. Matter of fact, I challenge you to leave a name of a show in the comments that has nothing political that you believe. I'll find you the episode that you weren't paying attention to. Enough with the deep dive about the intro, let's get to the episode. We start with Edith asking Archie if he likes spending time alone like this. They don't have iPhones, so she's asking him a bunch of questions. She asked if he loves her, and he just replies, what the hell are you asking me questions for? She saw Fiddler on the roof, so now she wants to sing high-pitched in his ear. He tells her that she got a roof above her head, so she gotta stop that annoying-ass singing, because it's giving him even more headaches than this newspaper. Unemployment's at a seven-year high, rise of strikes expected, no end of inflation near, his son-in-law comes down and blames Nixon. Archie asks if he has anything better to do than criticize their president. He better watch it. His daughter reminds him that the president is the head of the administration and many people are blaming them today. Archie tells them, not in this house we don't, because in this house it's my country right or wrong. Archie explains how inflation isn't directly tied to the president and the hippie son just kind of submits. The daughter suggests Edith stop fixing these socks and just get a new pair. Archie tells them that they don't have any sense of value in society today. Edith tries speaking, but Archie just tells her, who cares? Go make some coffee, will ya? There's a knock at the doorbell. It's Louise Jefferson. Very underrated black sitcom mom. Archie lets her know he already donated to the black charities and they deserve a lot of credit for what they're doing with those little hoodlums. She actually informs him that she's here to pick up a key. She's on her pusher T and Archie has no idea what she's talking about, I guess. Edith runs in and turns out key to the house across the street. While Edith is grabbing the key, Archie asked Louise if she saw the new Julia show, which is like the 1971 version of If a White Dude Walked Up and Asked Me If I Saw the Newest Prince Hood Cinema. After Louise leaves, Edith reveals that their across the street neighbor Jim Bowman is moving out. Archie is glad that he can finally move that piece of shingles. Edith reminds him that they have the same house. I still don't see a pot of coffee, so she should be probably getting that instead of trying to state facts. Archie is in his pile of shingles wondering who could be moving in. Louise meets with the neighbors and he's clearly trying to finesse. He told her to move in at night. He then tries to hurry her inside before anyone sees. Back inside the shingle shack, Archie Bunker knows that 
whoever's moving in across the street gotta be doing pretty good to have a cleaning lady. Edith suggests that she might be a live-in maid, but Archie tells her that only rich people and Jews got live-in maids. Edith tells them that not all Jews are rich, but Archie says he never met a Jew that wasn't. Points out that they actually literally know some broke Jews, but he's gonna need a new cup of coffee soon, so. Archie then gets scared that the neighbors might be one of that tribe. They move into neighborhoods just to cause trouble. He's going across the street to do some research. Archie runs into the neighbor trying to run the hell off on everyone. Archie asks about the people moving in, throw a diversion. Jim gives Archie a picture of Charles Lindbergh. Archie then reminisces on when old man McNabb down the block tried to sell his house to some Jews. They started a petition together and really saved the neighborhood. He reassures Archie that no Jews would actually step foot in this shingle neighborhood. Right then, Louise starts screaming about how much she loves owning a house directly across the street from the bunker residence. Archie would be glad to know that the Jeffersons are Protestant. Jim and Archie talk about how the house was on the market for 11 months. Now come on, Jim wouldn't just shaft his friends. Actually, it wasn't the financial strain at all. It was because Jim doesn't want to hate people anymore. He's been reading bumper stickers that say good neighbors come in all colors. Archie asks which colors his new neighbors are. I'm actually with Archie on this one because Dude is definitely still racist, but he loves green faces. Then he tries to tell Archie to gather everyone in the neighborhood to buy the house from them and then flip it. A little $2,000 profit in the Schwatzes will be tap dancing back to Harlem. If that wasn't, if that was really such a good idea, then why was the house on the market for 11 months? But I'm not there and Archie falls for that jive. Now they gotta buy and sell his house from him? Professor Finesser. Archie comes home with the bad news. Jim Bowman sold his house to an entire royal flush of spades. Edith still thinks they're Jews, so now she thinks there's black Israelites across the street. Archie talks about how they're moving on up, but now their property values are going down a black hole. The long-haired hippie son-in-law talks about sociological studies that state usually black people that move into a neighborhood got more money than their white neighbors. Archie's main character trait is hating facts, so he does what he does best and starts throwing out some slurs. He talks about the coons are moving in and watermelon rinds are going to be flying out the wind. The studio audience is dying, and I feel like they don't realize that Archie is a parody of themselves. The kids ask Edith about how she feels about black people. She talks about how admirable their progress is. Just a few years ago, they were servants and janitors, and now they're teachers, doctors, and lawyers. They've come a long way on TV. She had me in the first half, I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> There's a ring at the door knock. It's Lionel from the dry cleaners. He has some good news. Everyone interrupts him because they all need to tell him about how there's black people moving across the street. He finally gets a chance to speak and he tells him that he's the black people's. They need to see Archie's reaction so they call him down. Archie comes running because he needs to talk to Lionel. Archie needs some advice. A color family moved across the street. Lionel is shocked. He wants to know if the hippie knows. Archie says that the hippie told him that 12% of the neighborhood ought to be Negro. Lionel exclaims about how ridiculous that is. If that's the case, 88% of the Globetrotters should be white. Were there no Hispanic or Asian people at the time? Uh, I'm not sure. Archie acknowledges how there is some good blacks and Lionel finishes his sentence, but they'd be more comfortable somewhere else with their own kind. Archie reveals his plan. $2,000 profit gonna get anybody. Archie then wants to send Lionel to do his dirty work for him. This is America. You can't go up to people and be open and honest with them. That's why you need to find someone that's the same race to speak their language. Plus, it's for their own good. There's no crab games or pool halls in the whole area. No chicken shacks or a rib joint for miles. Lionel is under extreme duress at the lack of ribs. Lionel then tells him that it was them all along. He tells him that $2,000 ain't enough and he shakes his hand and walks off on him. The bunkers are gathered around their new neighbor, giving him advice on what living here is like. Archie hates all their suggestions. They suggest an Italian for a butcher, and according to him, they put their fat thumbs on the scale when weighing the meat. Lionel takes notes. Watch out for the Armenian at the gas station, and the mailman is a mute German, and don't forget the colored truck people. They're thieves and they always try to get a tip for Christmas. 